morning. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. This is Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Good guess. Tuesday morning. <laughs> Tuesday morning, Branches. Actually, I'm waiting for it, confirmation. It's actually not Branches. It's Wednesday morning. <laughs> Wednesday morning. <laughs> But good guess. You had, well, one, know, you we, had a we, one in seven shot of getting there. <laughs> we record these ahead of time, right? So I'm like, that's why sometimes I say, wasn't that great yesterday, the worship? And he goes, uh, honey, that was like yeah. three days ago <laughs> or two days you ago. You do tend to lose. <laughs> you do tend to lose track of the time. Yeah. Praise God. Lord, we adore you this morning. We worship you. We bless your name. We're going to come with praise and thanksgiving. You said, enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. So this morning, that's what we're doing. Come to bless your holy and mighty name. We're going to lay everything aside, whatever's going on, every situation, everything. We're just going to lay at your feet today, Lord, knowing that you're in control. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we worship, it just seems that things get all worked out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be your name.
glory to your name, Lord. Oh, you be magnified, you be lifted high, Lord. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, magnificent Lord and Savior, Redeemer, 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 my Redeemer, your Redeemer today. Thank you, Jesus, that you make all things new. For those that put their trust in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Savior. Come on, let's worship. Sing this song. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Hey, everything this morning is about the blessings of the Lord. Blessing the Lord. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning again. Everyone. We're back. We're back. We were just having a discussion about what everybody's been talking about for the last month. Talking about the election. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the election. Nope. So we're here to lift Jesus' name up. Just let you know that even, not man, huh? even, even here in Canada, and, and I'm sure it's the same all over the world, that people have very strong opinions. Mm. Um about what transpired there on November 6th. I think it was the 6th, the 5th. Uh, and about the change of government and about where the world is headed and how it affects the church, which is what we ne really need to be focused on and how it affects our meeting together, how it affects we our witness for the gospel of, of preaching and teaching the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have a personal, my personal opinion is is we have, no matter what you think about Donald Trump, I think we have a reprieve, a short one, a short window, but I think moving away from this poisonous, woke leftist agenda, uh, which is so anti-biblical and anti-God. Mm. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of Christians feel like. That leads to a larger question of, and maybe that's something we can talk about in our next round table, should Someone's calling me. Christians be actively involved in politics like this? Because it is such an explosive subject. 
and uh, but the only reason I'm talking about this now is because I had a long conversation with my son this morning. He wanted, he called, and he wanted. I haven't talked to him since the election. So, like everyone else, everybody has an opinion. He wanted to know what I thought, and I wanted to know what he thought. And, um, it was nice. We both agreed. We both saw the same thing in this. A very, this was a vote against the culture of what in North America. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily a vote of individuals or personalities. It was mm-hmm. a, it was the American people saying, no, we've gone too far left. We don't want to go there. You need to come back to the center. That's not where we're at. That's not where we want to. We want things to return to normal. Nothing's going to return to normal. Well, what they're used to. In other words, mm-hmm. by normal, what they mean is what everyone means to have, to live peaceful, quiet lives, as Paul says. I mean, that is our... So one of the reasons why you pray for the government that, that for their sakes, no, for the sake of power, and no, you we don't vote for that. We don't we don't take sides to that. We vote so that we, as believers in Jesus Christ, will lead peaceful, quiet lives. And in that atmosphere and milieu, we can preach the gospel. We can people are 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 going to be open to listen to. The, uh, all about the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's when it, when the final analysis, when it all comes down to it, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to the Lord Jesus, and how you see Him, and whether you receive Him. Anyway, we're going to we're talking about okay. Jacob. Yep. We left Jacob yesterday outside the the the, the, the city of Shechem, where mm-hmm. he had bought mm-hmm. himself some land, and he pitched his tents. And he called, uh, he erected an altar there, called it El Elohe Israel, which means God, God of Israel. And I pointed out yesterday that Elohim. that um, hmm. Israel here doesn't refer to the nation state or to the people of Israel. It refers specifically to Jacob. Because at that point, he's the only one who is called Israel. Because as you remember, mm-hmm. that was part of the... the blessing from the angel the angel changed it with mm-hmm. the one that he wrestled with at the Jabbok River Ford and um, changed his name from Jacob the supplanter a struggler with uh, mm-hmm. heel grabber and everything and changed his name to Israel which we can neither mean Prince of Egypt or he who struggles with God um, and there's so much in that as we talked about, mm-hmm. so it can it, it it can refer to each and every each and every one of us who are believers in Christ. We've all had some point stru- struggle and striven with God, and we showed how, as believers, when we return, the, the Bible tells us when we when we come into the presence of of the Lord, when we come into eternity, we too will mm-hmm. receive new names, yes. uh, which even now are as written down in mm-hmm. heaven. Names are very, very important in the mm-hmm. Bible, important in that culture, society. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wish we had more of an appreciation of just how important names really are. Our names are not just given to us because of, um, e- but uh, given to us because our parents like the name, or it was just there wasn't, you know, just Someone kind of frivolous that was reasons. That popular at the time. Popular like, at the time. Uh, you see those all over the video, you know. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Baby names that were popular in the 60s but are no longer popular. And then people go through these cycles. But n- no, there's a reason why we receive the names that we receive. Like Annie's name, her name, name means grace. Yeah. She's a very gracious, gracious person. Graceful. And all our names. And favor. And, and favor. Favor of the Lord. That's right. We all have, mm-hmm. they all have meaning. The, our names What's have meaning. Yours? The uh, meaning of yours? Rich and powerful, which I'm neither. Yes, you are in Christ. In Christ, maybe. He's the one who's... You're rich and you're powerful. I smell you every day. No, (laughs) No, that's more you. I'm kidding. (laughs) We already already have the video evidence for that, don't we, Branches? (laughs) Anyways, moving along. What about Dinah here, the daughter of uh, Leah? Back out. (laughs) Back back out to Jacob. So he finally settles down after his encounter with Esau. We saw the graciousness and love of God in that and how that was a reflection of this wonderful ministry of reconciliation that God's given to us. Mm-hmm. But here he is. So I think Jacob settles down and he thinks, okay, he said, my troubles are over. My wanderings are over. Uh, I'm going to sit here in peace and I'm going to raise my family. Mm. 
I think that is that happens to a lot of people when they come to faith in Christ. And I think that's the danger, and, I, and certainly the evangelical church and some of the uh, heretical offshoots that have happened in the last 30 or 40 years, um, this whole idea of easy grace um, easy gracism. <laughs> has not helped the situation because they've, they've given people the idea that when you come to faith in Christ, your troubles are over. You'll, you're, it's all smooth sailing from here on in. You're not going to have any problems mm -hmm. in this life. You're not going to have any issues. The, everything stops at the cross. You, you don't have to go beyond that's the cross. Right. The devil. That's where the real, the real salvation works itself out is beyond the cross. Amen. And the devil's going to leave you alone. And then you find out, they find that's out that that's not true at all. Their life gets even worse. Mm. Again, just I, I keep hit. He, I hate beating a dead horse, but this is what we have an issue with these modern worship songs. I my life is great because I have Jesus in my life. But you find most people find that when they come to faith, true faith in Christ, they they realize the truth of that saying that all who would live godly will they, face persecution. They know there's an enemy. If the world hated Christ before it mm -hmm. hated you, it's going to hate you because you have the Spirit of Christ in you. And therefore, it will Unless not you're lukewarm be lukewarm, and you're not making a difference, and Which, yeah. just coasting a nominal Christian, and you're still uh, in the enemy's but, camp, uh, then we, he's not going to bother with pray. you, and maybe your life will go on as this. People wake up, um, hmm. but I think there's some truth in that. Tim, Tim kind of mentioned that on on Monday, I believe. He said, if you go through your life and and you're not offending anybody, um, you're friends with everybody, and every, and you're just that uh, you have no issues with people and people don't have issues with you, mm -hmm. there might be a problem there. Because if you, and the pro and his problem isn't not your personality, right? not their issue. Right. That's not what the problem mm -hmm. is. The problem is it kind of it suggests that you're not speaking as you should. You're not being the witness you should, the, the, the salt and light, because that witness will automatically bring a reaction, There's a, a negative reaction there, from yeah. the world and a compromise. A man so. pleasing going on so mm -hmm. what we're going to see in this in this next chapter is is essentially that and what does revelation say the first ones that jesus rejects is cowards those that are cowardly and that won't they have a form of godliness but they deny the essential um truths of that you know and and yeah. and they compromise with the world and that's cowardly to be more concerned about your flesh and what people are going to think of you and if you did this and did that and obeyed the Lord. I mean, that's cowardly. And the other way that the Lord put that, put it that way, that what Anne's saying is that this is exactly what Jesus meant. He said that if, if you deny me before mm -hmm. men, I will deny you before the Father. Yeah. Another hard saying yeah. of the Lord Jesus that we absolutely must pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And so what we're, what we're seeing here, again, these chapters that we're going through in the life of Jacob is, is a great reflection of our own walk, of, of what our own walk looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole idea of, of the wrestling with the angel and, and it being a representation of, of salvation. And then East, the, the meeting with Esau, how after, right after, when you accept the Lord, everything looks wonderful. Everything is made new, as, as Paul says. Where everything is, uh, you're a new creation. Everything is made new. But after that, after that, you see, and this is something that we don't, because we don't really want to talk about it or really don't think about it. The enemy will not allow you to go away quietly. He's lost you. He doesn't sit back and say, oh, wow, I <laughs> lost another one. Let's move on to the next. No, no. He's going to do everything he can to get you back. And that's when things start happening in your life when you thought that things were going to be so wonderful. And, and again, this is why I have an issue with modern worship and music because it gives you a wrong idea, a wrong perspective of what it means to walk with Christ. It is not all roses. It's not all a bed of roses. It's, a, you know, look at all the, look at, the, the, everything that the, uh, let Paul had to deal with, all the apostles had to deal with, many, many people in the body of Christ who had faith in Christ, they paid with it with their lives. And I think that's why Paul says, you know, 
you say you believe, but you have yet to resist to the blood. In other words, you know, what's more important to you, your life or your life in Christ, your life in this world? But we must always be aware, and that's why Peter says that he, he compares Satan to this prowling lion, going around, prowling around, seeing who he can devour. And he's always seeking to reclaim those things that he has lost. He's been doing that since the garden. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's, a, he's like a roaring lion. He has his voice. He has his threats. Yeah. But his teeth have been taken away from him at the cross. Amen. So he can go around roaring all he wants. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, and now we we come to part in in Joseph's or Joseph's Jacob's walk of faith, where now reality sets in. You know, um, I like the way Tim put it on mm -hmm. Monday again, where he says, you know, you go to you go to a a, um, a service or you go to and and our Bible study and and you know you're just you're so excited and full with the full of the spirit, full with the Word of God, and you, you know you're just like your brothers and sisters, and you're just so yeah yeah yeah. He says, then he pauses. He says, and then you go to work. Mm -hmm. And then you you know say okay well you know Lord I'm gonna go and do all these things for you and make you smile. Well, I Monday forget how he put it. You know the smile you're all over the place and uh, I I'm gonna speak up for you blah blah blah. And then he says while you're looking for your next job, um, you're thinking well you know you're leaving it in the hands of God that He's gonna give you a better job next time that you learn something yeah. from. But there was a point that he was trying to make you know and this is where we need to be wise. Uh, when we do make a witness in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Shrewd. Um, <laughs> Discerning. That's why I think, again, just just on the side, that's why... Why is this a serpent harmless? Why I think it? what's happened in the States is, is giving the church a reprieve. Now in the workplace, what you're going to find is all this nonsense of DEI and all this nonsense that, that and the discouragement of speaking about the gospel in a workplace, I think is going to... It's going to be pushed back. And now I think more people are going to have the opportunity. You're not going to have to worry about losing your job because there's a change in the culture. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I think that that no is, comment. is quite possible. Anne doesn't comment because she doesn't agree with me on this. Not, she, not totally. She so thinks I'm not she getting into useless debates. The Donald <laughs> is the Antichrist and he's about I do to not make think his that. whatever. I do not think that. Don't anyway. put words in my mouth. <laughs> Let's get back to see what happens. Let's in read the word of God. Not what happens in Washington. Right. So, Genesis 34, verse 1. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country saw her he took her and lay with her and violated her his soul was strongly attracted to dinah the daughter of jacob and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman so shechem spoke to his father hamor saying get me this young woman as a wife hmm Okay. This, Total difference there between, you know, Tamar and Amnon. Anne's going to talk about, uh, we were just going to mm -hmm. say that, the, the, only other issue, or the only other event that we have that is similar to this, mm -hmm. about the rape of a virgin, the rape of an, an innocent girl, is uh, the story of Tamar and, and Ammon. Yeah. The son, um, they were stepbrother and sister, but the mm -hmm. sons of David or son and daughter of David, and you may remember that, where Ammon conceived this lustful right. attention of his stepsister Tamar. And he only wanted Tamar to come and minister. And then he told his friends about it. He said, well, just pretend to be sick and have her come and bring you some stuff and you'll be alone. And then, Cook of course, he ends up and him. takes advantage of her and he rapes her. But then the Bible says something very interesting and this is certainly true when it comes to human sexuality, and that is that the minute his lust was satisfied, his so-called love for mm -hmm. Tamar was replaced it by wasn't hatred. Love, it was lust. And mm -hmm. he said, get out of here. Go on. Get out of here. And Tamar was obviously distraught mm -hmm. and said, no, you, what you've done is wrong. And I told that I, 
I didn't want this, but now that you've done this, but now David that we've didn't acted, even address it. You, you need to take me as a wife for you. Mm-hmm. And Amnon wouldn't wouldn't nope. take her. And so but he got his just desserts. That's right. And this led to the rebellion of I was gonna say Agamemnon. The rebellion of his son, the famous rebellion of yeah. of Absalom. <laughs> Absalom's rebellion was basically led not because he thought David was a bad king. But because he refused to do anything to deal with it, to mm-hmm. to protect his his own flesh and blood, his mm-hmm. daughter, and Ab- um, Ab- Absalom was a natural brother of Tamar, and and Absalom took his father's place in saying in in protecting his sister, and then moving to get justice for his sister. You can go and read that, um, and I'll, I'll put it up doing there. Doing a where, separate where Bible study now. Well, Squirrel. it may sound no. like a separate Bible study, yeah, but, but it's, it's not relevant because there is a difference. Jacob is doing the same thing David did. Mm-hmm. What does it say here? Now, Jacob heard that that he defiled his daughter Dinah. Yeah, now, I, we haven't read that yet. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll get there. <laughs> I thought you'd already read that. Mm-mm. Sorry. Um, now, the difference between Amnon and Shechem, the son of Hamor, is that Shechem actually did love Dinah. Yes. This is one reason. Yes. Even after he had wrongful sexual relations with her, he still wanted her as his wife yeah. and yeah. asked his father to get her mm-hmm. for his wife. Um, right. Now, now, now we'll read about Jacob. Keep that thought in mind about David and Amnon mm. and, and Absalom. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, <clears throat> the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved. And they're very angry. Because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us and take your, our daughters to yourselves. So... You shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Hmm. Okay, so as we said, now hmm. Jacob hears about this, but he waits as his sons are out dealing with the livestock. So yeah. he hears about it in his tent, obviously, the mm-hmm. word. Now, I don't know, perhaps, I'm sure that Dinah came directly to him and told him what happened. In those days, you would expect your, you know, your father, who is the clan chieftain, to do something right away. But it says Jacob held his peace until his sons came. Okay, well, there's safety in a multitude of counselors. I want to talk to talk to the sons about it and see what their response should be. But it's interesting. The response of the sons is what is exactly what should have been Jacob's instead of holding mm-hmm. his peace. As the father, but it wasn't. And their response to this, to the rape of their sister, Mm -hmm. was they were indignant and very angry because he had done an outrageous thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter. David didn't do this. David didn't doesn't appear if you go and read that, it doesn't appear like he 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 thinks of it either way. He does. He's not angry about it. He's not angry yeah, with Amnon. It doesn't Amnon. say, but I'm sure. I think he, he, he gives a he light had rap kind of on emotion. the on the knuckles of Amnon. But other than that, he's not angry. He's not indignant that this should happen in his house. Now, again, I don't want to make a separate Bible study. Some of that has to do with the fact that God had already told him mm-hmm. because of his dalliance with Beersheba that because he had disobeyed the Lord, because he had killed Uriah, that that uh, trouble would never leave his house. And this was part of it. 
Now, Jacob now hasn't received this. Jacob has received nothing but positive words up to this mm-hmm. point, that God is with him, that God will bless him, that God, there's no, there's no mention of this. And this is what I was saying earlier. And this is this we do we do not we do not do any favors to to, to new converts when they come in, mm-hmm. and and don't explain the gospel and don't disciple them and don't warn them that don't think that your life is going to be right. You know, because Monday morning is coming. Because Monday morning <laughs> is coming. Mm-hmm. Sunday is great to feel uh, yeah, that you're you're strong and powerful in the Lord, but Monday is coming when you're going to have to go in the valley. This is what the the whole um, event of Jesus in on the Mount of Transfiguration mm-hmm. with the three disciples. That was the highest you can get, the elation mm-hmm. of being in the presence of God. But we don't stay there. Not in this. No. Not in this realm of existence. We don't stay on the mountain. We have to go into the demon possessed valleys, and that's what Jacob is learning here, and that's mm-hmm. what all of us learn when we come to faith mm-hmm. in Christ. Remember, when we give our witness, when we're witnessing about Christ, and even the witnesses in the, the, the Bible, they were never witnessing from the mountains, the mountaintops. They weren't mm-hmm. shouting from the mountaintops. They were in the streets. They were in the demon-possessed valleys. They were where people right. lived. The Bible doesn't say shout it from the mountaintops. It says shout it from the rooftops. From the rooftops, <laughs> where people well, are. It may talk about mountains and the Psalms and no, stuff. No, no, that's a good point, yeah. honey, because it says it... But, you know, where are most people? Well, they're on rooftops. They're Shout on a mountain tops. Most people don't live on a mountain top. Um, I mean, we do get to the mountain, but we don't stay there. No. Mm-hmm. And I guess I, I was suggesting by the way this is worded that this is exactly what they told Jacob when they mm-hmm. said, when they were very angry and mm. indignant and said, for such a thing must not, should not be done. Shouldn't be. Right. Like they should be actually having to tell Jacob this. Jacob should already know that this wasn't right and that Jacob should be conceived. But I, I get a picture that they're having this council, this family council, and the, and, the, and the sons are yelling at their father, you've got to do something about this. We cannot allow this to stand. And then in the midst of this, all of a sudden, Hamor, the father of Shechem, shows up. Mm. Hamor is a leader in Shechem, by the way, this mm-hmm. the city of Shechem. Right. His son's a prince. He's like too. the mayor. Right? Yeah. His son is a prince. And he comes and he speaks and, and he's make, he he's attempting to make this marriage alliance. But this is more of a marriage. It's more than just going to be a marriage al- alliance. It mm-hmm. isn't just for the sake of his son. <clears throat> but <clears throat> Hamor, it's for, land for, his, for his, to his credit, as most leaders would do, he's trying to... He's trying to to make a, a commercial, mm-hmm. a commercial um, covenant with with uh, a commercial trading covenant with Jacob, um, real estate. You know, he's trying to you come and and dwell with us, and 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 be part of us. Enjoy the land. Enjoy and let's trade with each other. Mm-hmm. Let's and let's more importantly, let's let's trade our sons and daughters. Let's have intermarriage. This is exactly. What God told Abraham and right. God told Don't Isaac and what he will tell Israel mm-hmm. all along uh, when they come out of Egypt into Canaan. He warns them, do not intermarry with the Canaanites. Yes, right. Do not mix muddy water with mm-hmm. the clean water that I have given to you. I mean, look at that whole incident with Nehemiah. You know when they they intermarried there, and he was he told yeah. them you have to get rid of your wives. Yeah, well, I think I was Ezra, but or, but well, the same, Ezra, same yeah. Ezra and Nehemiah were together. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, but yes, when the priest said, and they said, "Would you know you intermarried?" Like it even, was very even as strict, late as then, at the time strict. of Nehemiah. Mm-hmm. And we're talking a thousand years probably after mm. this all happened. Um, but Even again, then this they were doing it. this this is a this is a theme. This is this is mm-hmm. a command of God. Is it a command for us too? Because Paul says, you know, very much in the New Testament, you do, yeah, do yes, <laughs> said, um, do not be conformed to this world, uh, yeah. but but be conformed to be the will and the, the transformed by the renewing of your mind in Christ Jesus. That warning is still there for us, for the church, and and it's, and it's just as poignant today. Things we were just talking about, the, about the the political situation, the things that are going on in the world, are just as poignant and meaningful as today. We are not 
to be mixed up. We are not to be unequally yoked with the world. This has always been God's command right from the beginning for the people of God. Do not intermix because God knows that if they start intermixing and, and moving around, that they will quickly fall into idolatry, the worship of other gods away mm -hmm. from Yahweh. We know this. Compromising their faith. And we know this to be true because this is explained to us with, with Balaam. Remember when the mm -hmm. king of Moab asked Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel as they were going by, but he couldn't do it. He, instead of cursing them, mm -hmm. he blessed them three times because God told him not, mm -hmm. not to curse his people. Right. And yet, and we're all familiar with that part of the story, but the second, the last part of that story is is Balaam falls out of a when when he comes up, uh, steps away from his prophetic office. Mm -hmm. He gives Balak, the king of of Moab, a, 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 a piece of advice, a practical piece of advice that Moab can use, and that is, this is what I suggest you do. Let your daughters, let your women mm -hmm. mingle with the young men of Israel. Let them intermingle and marry together, mm -hmm. and pretty invite soon... Invite them over for parties. Invite them over for parties oh, and yeah. stuff, and pretty soon, they, you know, you'll be one people, you won't have to worry about them, because they'll consider you family, and you'll consider them family. And, you know, it's a kind of, it's a piece of advice that actually does work because of sin. And God knows this, which is why he warned sin. Abraham. And he had, Remember, this is the whole reason Isaac sent Jacob north. I don't want you marrying Canaanite women. Mm -hmm. And so here's Hamor presenting the same thing to Jacob. Mm -hmm. It's not like Jacob doesn't know this. Jacob should know this. Jacob should be aware. This is where Jacob needs to be as wise as a serpent yeah. and harmless as a dove. Mm -hmm. Because this sounds very reasonable, and, and in natural terms, it is very reasonable what Hamor is suggesting that they do. You know, we all long for peace, to, to, to live amongst each other with peace. Um, you shall dwell, he says, you'll dwell, you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be open to you. Mm -hmm. Dwell and trade in it. Get property in it. Be prosperous. Um, and he said, this isn't just about check my son's happiness he he truly loves your daughter and so remember that shechem is with his father hamor and now he speaks up and he says then shechem said to her father and her brothers let me find favor in your eyes and whatever you say to me i will give ask me ever so much dowry and gift and i will give according to what you say to me but give me the young woman as a wife Okay, so, again, Shechem is sharing mm. his heart here, and he's letting them know this isn't, you know, my, my dad's talking about having a trade agreement, and that's great, but I'm, I'm only here for one thing, and that's Dinah, because I truly love her. I truly desire her. I want her as my wife. That's why my father is here. You do whatever you think you want to do with my father. Now, um, this this is uh, I, I explain this in um, I, I've talked about this a number of times, especially in communion. That this is an expression of ancient culture, and what what this is is whenever there was a marriage planned, it was uh, it's not like today where people go out and date. You didn't date in those days. You didn't see some uh, attractive woman or a handsome man, whatever it was that you were attracted to, and you mm. went out on a date to the local McDonald's. That, that's not the case. They, you weren't even allowed to, to communicate. The agreement, the marriage agreement, was always between the two fathers. The father of the prospective groom. Hmm. The son would go and ask the father, I, this woman who's in the village or this girl who's in the village, I really want her for a wife. Can you go and talk to her father? He was not allowed to do that it had to be done by the father so the father would go to the father of the prospective bride and between them they would make the marriage covenant they the, the agreement these are the mm -hmm. things that, and, and this is essentially what this is you know because Hamar has already said make marriages with us yeah. you know just not with Shechem and, and Dinah but make marriages with all of us we'll make marriages with you you know we'll cement this in 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 the blood of family so to speak um, and that's why Hamar is there, but he's, he, you know, this is part of the, the, 
the agreement between Czech and, and they're going to be a reflection of this larger agreement to, between mm -hmm. the two people groups. This is what happened, mm -hmm. and uh, the reason I bring this up is because remember uh, if how in the time of the Lord Jesus, it it had, it had developed into this ritual where the father of the groom would they would come together, they would make an agreement, and then they would make an agreement of how the son and the daughter would meet in, in a ritual exercise. Shechem and Dinah have already met. So that's a, they're not going to allow to do that. But and what would happen is that the families would, would come together. There would be a table with two chairs and a, and a glass of wine. And the bride would sit on one side and the groom the other. A lot of times this is the first time uh, the bride had ever seen the groom at some point. Um, and the bride makes uh, a ritual promise to stay pure, um, to, to wait for her groom until the day of the marriage and she would seal it with by drinking the wine uh, and then she would offer the goblet to him and he would say to her i will not drink of the vine i will not drink from this cup until i drink it with you in my father's house mm -hmm. and then he would drink it does that sound familiar isn't that what jesus said during the last supper to his disciples I will not drink this vine, uh, drink of the vine again mm -hmm. with you until I drink it anew with you in my father's house. What's Jesus saying? He's exactly what the bride. Because at that point, the groom leaves the 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 bride and he goes back to his father's house and he starts building a room onto his father's house, the bridal chamber. And. Jesus says, you believe in God, believe in me. Behold, I go and prepare a place for you so that where I am, you will be also. And when I am finished, I will come and receive you unto me mm -hmm. into this bridal chamber. This is what we believe. This is what we're waiting on the second coming. And that's why there's no date set for marriages because nobody knew when the groom was going to come back. And the groom was not allowed to come back and get his bride until his father confirmed his work and looked at it and said, all right, you can go and get your bride. So even the son didn't even know. It was whenever the father decided. So we're, we're, we're sort of getting a picture of this and, and an image of this. Um, and, but. <laughs> you know... Hamar and Shechem thought they were doing the right thing. They were certainly doing the thing that culture and society hmm. demanded. But, uh, you know, rape is never the right thing. Rape is never, is, is no way to start a marriage. That is not God's way. That may be the world's way. But that's taking what you desire by force and not allowing the Lord to give it to you. Hmm. Um, and marriage should always be that There's way. There's a consequence in yeah. every action that is wrong. And they're going to pay the consequences. So, very quickly as we end, and then we're just going to finish this, this part up today. So, Shechem says to the sons, to, to Jacob and the sons, mm -hmm. you name your price, name the bride price, and I'll pay it. This is how much I love your daughter slash sister. Whatever you say, I will pay. Mm -hmm. So, what do the sons of Jacob say, honey? She's got the Bible. Verse 13. Yeah. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, and spoke deceitfully because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition, we will consent to you if you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. <laughs> so... The, these these they sons, they were, they were being smart, right? These, but they didn't realize they were actually going to do it. Well, these sons, 
of Jacob are taking after their father. Because what does it say? The sons of Jacob answered Deceit. Shechem and answered him deceitfully. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're indignant. They're very angry. Their pride, their family pride has been hurt. And I think the more they see their father's non-reaction to this, as with Absalom, with David, the more angrier they got. And I think they were thinking, they all had the same thought, I think, amongst them. And they were saying, our father's not going to do anything about it, but we're going to do something about this. We're going to, we're going to exact our revenge so that it'll go far and wide that you don't mess with us. You don't mess with this clan. You know, you know, we protect our own. We don't let these slights go by without answering them. So they come up with this plan. And they said, if we, we can't, it's our practice. We circumcise all our males. Mm -hmm. said, we can't, we can't give her over to an uncircumcised man. He said, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll do this one thing for you. We'll, we'll allow this if, and here's where they're deceitful, and here's where they're very sly. Mm -hmm. They knew exactly what they were going to do. He said, if. You, sir, you get circumcised, but not just you, but every male, oh, the male in yeah. Shechem. Because they'd be in pain for three days. So that, <laughs> and you know, and the way they, they cloud, they, they covered it over with saying, and, there, and then when you do that, then yes, we can give our daughters to you, and we can take your daughters with us, and we can mm -hmm. do everything that your father has suggested. We can live together in harmony. We can trade together. We can become prosperous together. We can become one family clan unit all you have to do is circumcise yourselves um mm -hmm. but he said if you don't if you don't circumcise i'm sorry but we can't it's our belief it's our it's our practice if you will not circumcise yourselves then we're going to take dinah and we're out of here we're gone we're done you will see us no more and of course that was probably shechem the, the, the was the last thing he wanted you know that the prospect of never seeing Dinah again was probably so heinous to him he would like i said to you he was willing by his response to do anything you know be careful that we get ourselves into a situation where we promise the devil that we'll do anything mm -hmm. you know or god <laughs> or even even the Lord, but I mean, we we do promise to give the Lord everything that we have. But, but you, I mean, some, sometimes we say, "Okay, Lord, <clears throat> if you do this for me, I'll do this, this, and this for you. I'll give you uh, whatever." Yes, but. yeah, you can't. You know, we do tend to, and this is where we've talked about this before mm -hmm. in in Matthew five in the Beatitudes, where, where Jesus warns us, "Don't don't make vows, mm -hmm. don't make oaths." Because we we won't keep them. I'm just thinking of that. Yeah. We won't keep them. Um, but but going back to this about mm. about circumcision mm. and and like Annie says, and we're going to see this later. This was a way to weaken their enemies. Mm -hmm. The circumcision. And we're going to go into this yeah. a little more fully when we when we talk about this tomorrow. But they they understood Shechem's desire. Mm -hmm. to 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 be willing to do pretty well anything that they asked and so, so they they were kind of using the, the their faith like the uh, as a weapon against them well i'm pretty it doesn't say here but like, it doesn't you like know, the laws the, of of their god of the god. inference they would probably just say they wouldn't up i don't think put it this way our god says that we need to do it, it doesn't say that here but i think it, it was more inference of our practices yeah this clan's practice is probably not giving them the reasons them. why um mm -hmm. and and i think this is very interesting that um I find it interesting as a father that at this crucial moment that Jacob has stepped back and allowed so his sons that we to know. act in his stead when he was there. Remember, this is the same thing that happened when Abraham sent um, Eleazar north to find a wife for Isaac. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time we're introduced to Laban. But Laban and Rebekah's father... Bethuel is still alive and he's still there but it's not 
Bethel, who is acting as the father of Rebecca, and he's not acting as the clan chieftain, it's Laban, his son, who's acting in this stead, making the marriage contract with Eleazar to take Rebecca back so that she could be wife to mm -hmm. Isaac. Here we have the same thing going on here. Jacob should have stood up and 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 spoken for it as the clan leader. He should have spoken up because he's the mm -hmm. one that's speaking directly to God. He's the one that knows what the Lord wants. But we we don't get any indication here that he's saying anything. Um he's he's not trying to hold his sons back. He's and I'm not even sure he's indignant or or he, he's certainly not the way his sons are, because it's not the, the the these passages tell us he isn't. He's just silent. He's mm -hmm. suddenly silent, and I think from this point on, Jacob becomes a secondary character in his own life, if you will. Um. He he's still the leader of the clan. He's still. He he's still that guy, but. He seems to have lost his, uh, you know, I don't know if it's because now he's limping. Hmm. And, and, but he's, and this so happens, he seems to have lost his initial, how's the best way, but his, his initial excitement, his initial, um, when we come to faith in Christ, if, if any of you remember, I mean, it's like for me, when it becomes this this wonderful, bright, explosive moment, and we we're so excited mm -hmm. to serve the Lord, and we see God in everything, and we just, you know, we want to live our lives for the Lord, and we just we see Him in everything that we say and do. Yeah. But after a while, yeah. living in this world and mm -hmm. dealing with this, it gets less and less. We're, we still believe, but we're we're kind we're of mature. We're, we're be, we we call it maturity. Uh, there is a maturity, but but we less, but we're less and less inclined to to, uh, to put forth, put ourselves forth in the name of the Lord as we would be in mm. the first days we were saved. Mm. Um, Jacob in these places is more than capable, is more than willing to let his son speak for him. Mm -hmm. This was not his son's prerogative to say this to Shechem. Mm -hmm. Remember what I said about marriages? This is between fathers. Mm -hmm. This is what Jacob should have said. It's Jake, it should have been Jacob's response to the mm -hmm. son. But probably because, on the other hand, in, in their thinking, but on the other hand, it should have been Hamor who was saying this about the willingness to pay the bride price and not Shechem. Because, mm -hmm. Again, because this is supposed to be between the fathers. So... There's 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 warning here. There's 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 a, there's a good a, a, a good practical picture of what happens um, in when our you, walk, when your house is out walk, of order and when your house is out of order, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and how it can happen very quickly after these moments of exaltation on the mountain, coming back into like I said the demon possessed valleys, and you it can you can become very discouraged, and quite quickly. If we don't stick, if we don't stay close to God, and some of us make this make this uh, mistake, we make the mistake. We take we take daughters from the world, we take sons from the world, whereas we should be paying attention to what God says, and said, so "Do not take a wife from the Canaanites, but from your own mm -hmm. kin, from those. Do not be unequally yoked." I'm, I'm just going to read, we're going to finish by reading 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what mm -hmm. partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Mm -hmm. Or what fellowship has light with darkness? Right. What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? Mm -hmm. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says mm -hmm. the Lord. I know it hadn't been written yet, but that's what Jacob probably should have said. But he allowed his sons 
to act in their flesh, mm-hmm. and it is not going to reflect nope. well mm-hmm. on Jacob. Many people will die. Many people will die. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what your word shows us. And and the warnings that it gives to us, mm-hmm. Lord God, in this walk of faith, that it is not easy, yes, that we do need the spirit of Christ in mm-hmm. us, Lord God, yes. to walk through these valleys, these valleys of the shadow Hallelujah. of death. And yet, Lord, the psalmist David says that we shall fear no evil when we walk through the shallow, shadow mm-hmm. of death because your rod and staff comforts us, <laughs> because you are with us, Lord, as long as we look to you to guide our footsteps in the Amen. paths of righteousness. As, as Annie's been mm-hmm. saying on Sunday night, Lord, through in Psalm 139, leading us in the way everlasting. Yes. Yes. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we... That, that we will remain strong and steadfast in your service, Lord God. That we will remember what you have said to us. That we have hidden your word in our hearts. That we may not sin against you, Lord God. That we will stand up, Father, against the world that says, that wants to make an alliance with us. Against the world, Lord, that wants to trade with us and say, come, be prosperous. Join us, Lord God. Father, let us never, uh, let us always remember Jesus. what you have said. Do not take a wife from the Canaanites. Do not indulge in the I with. Uh, do not walk with the idol worshippers, as you've said in this Second Corinthians six, Lord, as you had the Apostle Paul write. Father, I pray that we will heed your mm. this this counsel. We mm. will heed this warning, Lord to stay away and to walk circumspect before you, Lord mm-hmm. God. Search our hearts, Lord, to know that if any wicked way be found in us, Lord, and remove it. And let us be let us be clean and let us let us be pure in your sight, Lord, as you are, Father, through the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray this for all the branches, Lord, and all who will be listening today. And we give you thanks, yes, Father God, for your word and the illumination and yes. wisdom that it gives to us, Lord. We pray that we will have the ears to hear, Lord God, that we may go out and act yes, upon Lord. it, Father. To the glory of your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow we'll see how this plays out. We sure will. And what we can learn from it. And uh, I, I, you know, Praise I don't know. I, maybe I'm prejudiced, but you know, I'm I'm biased. But I I, I learn a lot about myself by studying the life of Jacob. Mm. I see myself in in uh, doing a lot of things that Jacob did. Mm-hmm. And I think if we're true with ourselves, we'll we'll all see ourselves in Jacob. And that's why this is here. And we should. This, this is, is why this mirror. story is here. Exactly. Yeah. To exactly. to read it and to study it and. Ex- hold it up to our own heart it's like a plumb line right you know there are great things about jacob that we need to take to heart Mm -hmm. but there's also things that we need to stay away in his life don't do what jacob Mm -hmm. did and as paul says that's why we have the scriptures to teach us Mm -hmm. um and to and to educate Mm us and uh, to 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 do that that by their example teaches us by their example through the holy spirit we will i we will not fall into the same pitfalls mm-hmm. you know because we have to face the same thing they did and that is mm-hmm. we have a nature of sin in us that needs to be overcome even after we're saved mm-hmm. yeah so stay blessed so stay blessed hallelujah amen